more painful than going to war with Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. More painful than losing two major American towers. More painful than the Queen of England kicking your rear and saying you need to submit. I'm not sure what to submit to, but you need to submit. More painful than American slavery. American slavery was abolished in 1865 by President Lincoln. Hell is more painful than all of that. Why? Because it's never ending suffering, not against your color, not against your skin, not against your body. You know, I see guys at the gym, they're lifting their weights and they're all muscular and they got the thighs and they look good. You know, like, man, I wish I had those thighs and those muscles. But that's not what's going to be judged. It's your soul and your spirit that's going to be judged. Never ending pain and judgment. Just your soul and your spirit and the flames. Just like the man in Luke 16 cried, so will you cry. So the Bible says in Matthew 10, verse 23, but whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Right? So the Word of God says, when they persecute you, who? Who do you think? Right? Brother will betray brother. When your brother persecute you, what does it say here? Father is going to persecute his child. Right? Children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Why? Because the parents are Christian and the children are not. So what does the word of God say? When they persecute you, family member, you who is the Christian in the family, you who believe in the name of Jesus, you who are enduring their persecution, when they persecute you in one city, you, the Christian apostle, who's going to do what? Preach the gospel of the kingdom. When they persecute you in one city, if they persecute you in Seattle, run to Portland, Oregon. If they persecute, persecute you in Portland, Oregon, run to San Diego. If they persecute you in San Diego, run to Sacramento. If they persecute you in Sacramento, come back to Portland. If they persecute you in Portland, run to England. You get what he's saying? Don't stop running because they'll never stop persecuting you. In other words, by the time you run to every city that there is in the world or in, in Jerusalem, what does the scripture say? It says here, for truly I say to you, you will not finish. You will not finish running, going through the cities of, of Israel until the Son of Man comes. You're not, I mean, wow, that's a lot of running. No, that's a lot of persecution. It's not a lot of running, it's a lot of persecution. It's a lot of resistance against the gospel. It's a lot of allegiance to Satan. What did I tell you was at the root of Satan's heart? That you worship him. And when they hear that you don't bow the knee to the snake, they start persecuting you. Because the snake is the one that's giving them the world. That was the promise right? He promised you the world. I will give you the world if you bow down and worship me. And everybody in the world has bowed down. Everybody wants to be rich and famous. Everybody wants to be well known. Everybody wants to, to marry a good looking woman, right? So betray the son of God. Don't become a sissy. And furthermore, he didn't ask you to become a sissy. He asked you to repent and believe and be saved. So the scripture says, but whenever they persecute you in one city, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel until the Son of Man comes. The Son of Man is coming back. After the crucifixion, his death and resurrection, he came back. But there's another coming. The second coming of Christ. Right? We read about it in Paul's epistles. We read about it in Matthew, the second coming, the rapture of the church. 
So he says in verse 24, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he becomes like his teacher and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign the members of his household? A disciple is not above his teacher. Dr. John MacArthur was my teacher. I'm not above him, according to the word of God. Right? Nor a slave above his master. If Gabriel Franklin was my master, and she brought me into the United States for sexual services, or whatever it is. Hey, you know, you were asking me about, uh, so my boss, do you have a smartphone? Uh, I have a phone. Oh, you can take a picture of that, and then in the top corner you tap on it, and it sends you to this same page. Oh, okay. So you can go there. Okay. Then what you have to do all right. is you have to scroll kind of all the way down, okay. about the middle, look for a link uh -huh. that says, Create career profile login. You have to do that first. Okay. Do the login bullshit. Okay. You know, give your email. Then, okay. Then it'll get you into, okay. I think, a page to okay. apply. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. All right, all right. All righty. That was the postal, postal woman. I was talking to her earlier on the other corner. And uh, she was telling me that, uh, and she brought me the paper so I could do the work of looking for a job at the post office. But anyway, back to the scriptures. So as I was saying earlier, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. If Gabriel brought me into the country to be a slave, right, sex slave, a servant to serve under her, as I guess she was assuming my mother was. The scripture says it is enough for the disciple that he becomes like his teacher and a slave like his master, right? It's okay for you to teach the Bible the way this man taught because the command of the scriptures is go into all the world, make disciples of the nations, baptize them and teach them to observe all that I commanded you. It's not only for the teacher, but it's also for the student. It's not only for the disciple, but it's also, it's not only for the apostle, but it's also for the disciple, right? He says here, if they have called the head of the house, Beelzebub, how much more will they malign the members of his household, right? Jesus was called a servant of Beelzebub. Why would they do that? Because they didn't want to honor him as God. As Paul says in Romans chapter 1. Even though they knew God, they didn't want to honor him as God. Right? Thomas was reluctant to honor Jesus as God until he did what? He saw the nail print in his hands. He saw the cut of the sword or the spear on his side. And Jesus said to him, here, put your finger here and do not be unbelieving, but believing. It was then that Thomas says, my Lord and my God. You have never seen the Christ. Are you with Thomas, the one who denies? Or are you with Thomas, the one who says, my Lord and my God? When Peter writes his epistle, what does Peter say? Even though you have not seen him, and yet you love him. Talking to the church in Asia Minor. What about you in Portland, Oregon in the 21st century? What do you say? So a disciple is not above his teacher nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he becomes like his teacher and the slave like his master if they have called the head of the house Beelzebub. If they have called Christ, what? Beelzebub. How much more will they malign the members of his household? The disciples. How much more will they malign you, my apostles, who I'm sending out, right? To go into the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. The men that he summoned, Simon Peter, who is Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, 
Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him, was replaced by Matthias in Acts chapter 1, I believe. So these are the members of Christ's household. If they call the Christ Beelzebub, how much more the apostles whom he's now sending out to Israel and eventually to all the world to preach his gospel of salvation. And here we are in the 21st century. What does the word of God say? So we go back to verse 26. He says, therefore, do not fear them. Who? The ones who are persecuting you. The ones that are going to be persecuting you. Right? Verse 23. But whenever they persecute you in one city, flee. He says, therefore, even though you run from one city to another, do not fear them. For there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Right? There is nothing concealed that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Whatever it is that you find out about them while you're preaching the gospel. When John the Baptist was preaching the gospel, what happened to John? John was arrested because the wife of Herodias was sleeping. Herod was sleeping with his, with his brother's wife. And, and, and what, did, what did John say to him? You're not allowed to do that. So they arrested John and put him in jail. When Herod's birthday party came, 